Hi. Now when you're working with vector equations of lines, quite often you can be asked to find the coordinates of a point on the line which is closest to the origin O, and also the shortest distance to the line L from the origin. And how do we do problems like this? Well, I've got an example here, as you can see, I've got an equation of a line L. We've got that the position vector of any point, say P, on the line with coordinates x, y, z is given as minus 3, 3, minus 1, plus lambda 1, minus 3, 2. And we should be familiar by now that this vector here represents the position of a known fixed point on the line. And this vector here, 1 minus 3, 2, represents a vector in the direction of the line L, parallel to the line L. So where is this point that is closest to O going to be on the line L? Well, it's going to be a point, say, somewhere like this. I'm going to call it N. It's a point so such that ON is perpendicular to the line L, that is, at right angles. And this will be our shortest distance, the length ON. In this sketch, it looks like lambda would have to be 2. I'll show you why, because if we were to go from the origin up to our fixed point here, minus 3, 3, minus 1, and then do, say, two values of this vector, let's just bring that there. We go up to here and do one of the vectors, 1, minus 3, 2, and then another one, it would take us to this point n. But bear in mind that this drawing is only a sketch. It's not representative of the true diagram. But what I'm going to have to do to get to the coordinates of n is to work out what the corresponding value of lambda would have to be. So let's say that n has coordinates, say, x1, y1, z1. Let's just mark that in there. So this vector ON would be a column vector x1, y1, z1. I haven't really got much room to write that in there, but hopefully you've got that idea. Now, if N is a point on the line L, then x1, y1, z1 must satisfy the equation of the line. In other words, we can say that x1 y1, z1, that's r in other words, must equal minus 3, 3, minus 1. Let's just write that in. Minus 3, 3, minus 1, plus some amount, we'll call it lambda then, in the direction of the vector 1, minus 3, 2. In this sketch, as I just showed you, it would seem that lambda equal 2. But we don't really know that because this sketch is not accurate. But if we could find out what lambda is, we would get the closest point, x1, y1, z1. So what we do now is we equate the components. We'll just write that in here. Equate the components, that's i, j and k. So, in other words, if we look at the i components, we get x1 equals minus 3 plus lambda times 1. So we get x1 equals minus 3 plus lambda. Let's call that equation 1. When we compare the j components, we get y1 equals 3 minus 3 lambda. So y1 equals 3 minus 3 lambda. And that'll be our second equation. And for the third equation, we compare the k components. So we've got z1 equals minus 1 plus 2 lambda. And we'll call that equation 3. Now we've got four unknowns, but three equations. So we can't solve for lambda at the moment. 
we need another equation. So where are we going to get that from? Well, what we should know is that this vector on is perpendicular to our direction vector. Look, we can bring that down like that and you should be able to see that the vector on and our direction vector 1 minus 3, 2 are at right angles to one another. So what does that mean? Well, it means that the dot product or scalar product of these two vectors must equal zero. So let's just write a note on that first of all, that since on is perpendicular, I'll just write perp for short, okay, is perpendicular to the vector 1 minus 3, 2. It follows that x1, y1, z1, remember that's the column vector for O to n, x1, y1, z1, when dotted with the vector 1 minus 3, 2, must equal 0. That's the standard result that we've had before on the scalar or dot product. If you're not sure about that, just drop back and have a look at the video on the scalar product for perpendicular vectors. Now, we can work this out. We therefore have, when we do the scalar product, x1 times 1, so in other words just simply x1, plus y1 times minus 3, or in other words minus 3y1, plus z1 times 2, or 2z1, must equal 0. And that's our fourth equation. So we now have four unknowns and four equations, so we should be able to solve it. So all we need to do now is simply substitute 1, 2 and 3 into equation 4. So let's just say that we'll sub 1, 2 and 3 into 4. So what do we get? Well for x1 then we've got minus 3 plus lambda, minus 3 plus lambda, minus 3 times y1, so 3 times 3 minus 3 lambda, plus 2z1, so it's 2 lots of minus 1 plus 2 lambda, that equals 0. And if we expand out the brackets here, well we've got minus 3 plus lambda, minus 9 plus 9 lambda, minus 2 plus 4 lambda, equals 0. Now if we group up the terms we end up with minus 3, minus 9, minus 2, well, that's going to be minus 14 and then lambda plus 9 lambda is 10 lambda and plus another 4 lambda is 14 lambda and that equals 0. Add 14 to both sides we end up with 14 lambda equals 14 and divide them both sides by 14 and you get lambda equals 1. Now that we've got lambda equals 1 we can sub this back into 1, 2 and 3 and get our values for x1, y1 and z1. So if we do that we end up with n having coordinates x1 which will be minus 3 plus 1 that's going to be minus 2. As for y1 it's going to be 3 minus 3 so that's 0 and then for z1 we've got minus 1 plus 2 which is going to be 1. So our coordinates then for n are minus 2 naught 1. And when it comes to finding the shortest distance then we just need to find out the length or magnitude of the vector on. And we can do that easily, just simply on equals the square root of the sum of the squares of these coordinates. I can drop the minus, doesn't matter about that, we can just write 2 squared plus 0 squared plus 1 squared. So we end up with that shortest distance equaling root 5. So in summary, 
what we have got then is they asked us to find the closest point to O so we can just say that the closest point happens to be minus 2 naught 1 and the shortest distance is equal to root 5, root 5 units if you like okay I don't think you'd be marked down if you didn't write units but uh, it is a length it's also interesting to note that when I sketched this diagram it looked like lambda was 2 we went to this point here and lambda was 2 to get us to n but it turns out that lambda equals 1 so this point minus 3, 3 minus 1 on this line would have been about here then. But it doesn't matter how we draw our sketch. It's just to get the idea across. OK? Well, that brings us to the end of this video now. And uh, I hope you've found it of some use. And uh, if you want to look at more videos and find out what I've got, just go on the website and you'll find indexes with listings of all the various videos that I produce and they're all free okay